Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Madden 17 Road to Glory. And as you can see on the screen, top right hand corner, we have a lot less coins than we did before, but there's good reason for that. We've picked up the best wide receiver in the game. 97 rated in our team at the moment, and I am so excited to just be able to get a player like that into the team, considering we spent nothing on the game. And if you got a brief glimpse of him there we have got the goat jerry rice in the team at 97 overall which is ridiculous if you look at those stats that is those stats are just phenomenal i mean antonio brown has good stats and he trumps him in pretty much everything except elusiveness which to be honest isn't that huge considering the role we're going to play him in but those our top three receivers now, 97, 96 and 93 in the team, which is unbelievable. If you, if you, I just can't believe it's that good, to be honest. Overall, the team, I haven't made any other changes, I don't think. Actually, I think I've got a new change on the D-line. We've been doing a few team heroes here and there, and we got Jarrett on the D-line, and we got Cockrell as our fourth uh, cornerback. But just be doing team heroes. I mean, they aren't too influential on the team. We've got Joe Hayden as five now. So we've got a good good round team, I think you can say. Yeah, everywhere on the team is pretty pretty good. We haven't got any weaknesses. Which, considering we've still got 300k to work with as well. I'm very, very happy with. We've got Thea Riddick as our third receiver as well. We've got Herman Moore and Golden Tate in there. I'm going to put Harrison in as our number four receiver. So we, have, we pretty much have good backup in every single position. I'm going to put Williams as number five. But let me know down in the comments how your teams are doing compared to this, this road to glory anyway. Because I just want to know how you guys are doing compared to me. Because I think overall I'm doing very well, but comparatively to you lot I could be doing terribly. Or I could be actually doing really as well as I think. It would be nice to know how you guys are doing down in the comments. But for this episode... Um, I think I'll talk about the sets I'm thinking of doing as well. So we did get the gift sets from Ultimate Freeze. They aren't in the sets thing anymore, unfortunately. But I have got quite a few collectibles saved up, as you can see here. Um, I've got enough for the uniforms, and then I've also got enough to get the stadium. But I think I'm going to wait until the gifts come out again. I think I've heard they're going to come out again just after Christmas. So I can put all the collectibles into that set and get the gifts for that as well. So I'll probably be doing that when the time comes. Just because I have about 40 gifts, I think. Uh, 40 collectibles, which means I can get three gifts. Hopefully they'll be better than this one. This one I did get a veteran pack. I opened it. I was recording, but it wasn't worth putting into the video. Because as you can see, or as I'll show you, we ended up getting nothing worthwhile. We ended up getting... I can't remember who it was. Veteran. Philip Rivers. So it wasn't worth it whatsoever. But as you can see, we've got quite a lot of collectibles in the club at the moment. And we've been slowly working our way towards putting together some more team heroes. We've got six or seven of them. So it's very slowly coming together. But it will come together in the end, which I'm pretty damn excited for. We also got Jason Peters out of position card for doing the solos. If you haven't seen the solos, they do take quite a long time, these ones. I wasn't really prepared for how long they'd actually take because they take a hell of a long time because some of them uh, I think it's it's not these ones these games are quite difficult but some of these solos as you can see five passing touchdowns four rushing touchdowns they do take quite a bit of time to do which is not what I'm used to with the solos they tend to be pretty quick to do but what I'll show you also in this episode straight after this I'll jump into it is if you haven't done the solos the last one here is absolutely hilarious and what I'm going to do now is actually I'll jump straight into that and then we'll jump into some gameplay but if you guys have enjoyed the episode up to this point smash a like on the like button comment down below on anything I've mentioned as I said compare your teams to what I'm doing and subscribe to the channel for more but for now I'm just going to jump into exactly why this solo is hilarious. So actually something I didn't mention is the price we got Jerry Rice for. We got him for, not in the screen, it'll be on the next screen. We got him for a very low price, which is why I did pick him up. I thought, I'll bow a little bit. We got him for 290k, which might seem like a lot, 
but if you compare it on the market he's been going for around 400k for a few days at the moment he has gone down in price quite significantly to 315 but that is still 25k over what i paid so if i sell him i think i could list him for 330 and i might only use him for this episode depending on how good he is if he is very good i'll keep him in the team but if not i'll relist him and i think i'll be able to make some decent profit and it worst case scenario i'll only be making a small loss of coins so i'm not too disappointed about that i just want to see how he plays see how one of the very top players in the game plays and see if it does make a huge difference for the team but anyway i'll jump into that solo now and show you why it's absolutely hilarious so guys the solo if you haven't seen it is coming up now and as you can see we're actually playing against miniature players they are 99 overall and they are not bad but you come up against them the first time and you think there's got to be something wrong here this can't be right because i haven't seen this before I might have done it in previous patterns, but I haven't seen it before. And the first time we're going to use Jerry Rice, going to launch it deep to him, see if he can get it, and he can't. But these players, don't forget, they are 99 overall, and they have 99 in every stat, I think. So 99 jumping, 99 everything. So when you line up against them, it's not as easy as you might think. Obviously, you have height on them massively. As you can see, you have about two, three feet on them. But it doesn't make too much of a difference. But amazing catch from Jerry Rice there didn't expect that but one thing you have to consider is it's not as easy as you might think but anyway i'll just jump straight into the actual games now that you've seen the absolutely hilarious little elves that you have to play against so my first opponent here we're lining up with a 97 jerry rice still can't believe we actually have him in the team but my opponent had a 97 Dion sanders to counter that so it should be a hell of a game for him and hopefully Jerry can come up big and when you're playing against Dion Sanders you have to run the ball a lot because in coverage he is unbelievable but against the run he is absolutely terrible so you're going to run the ball see a lot of play actions things like that just so he bites and it makes it a little bit easier for us to get down the field I won't show all the runs but if you ever see that I'm on second and third or something it's because I ran the first few yards and we're working our way downfield pretty nicely on this drive we've got Dallas Clark on a nice wheel route there and my opponent obviously I was trying to force the ball to Jerry Rice wherever I could just because he's a new player and unfortunately wasn't coming off as often as I would have liked but where it does come off he does make some very good plays and my opponent as you can see in the top right is raging a hell of a lot as I drove my way downfield here because he didn't expect me to drive on his defense considering how good his team actually was I was very happy just to score in this game but um, I mean we're 7-0 up I was feeling pretty confident hoping we can win at this point because my defence has got him on lockdown he didn't have any insane offensive players I don't think um, I can't remember who, who his middle player was I know he had Jalen Ramsey and Deion Sanders but I can't remember who his other player was he had Aaron Rodgers so he doesn't have a bad offence but it's not an offence that I'm scared of with the insane defence that we have and we force him to punt on his first possession he fluffs the punt a little bit puts us midfield pretty much and i'll i'll take that because i know i need one first down just to get into field goal range make it a two possession game and that's all i wanted at this point as you can see i'm going to run towards Deion sanders side he won't be able to get off the block whatsoever we motion someone over there and as you can see Dion doesn't get off the block until we pick up a reasonable gain six yards there so that, that gives us a lot of maneuverability on our next down so second and four once again gonna run it with levy on bell i thought someone was going to come and tackle me there so i went for the went for a truck no one did which slowed me down and unfortunately i think without that it might have been a touchdown or something like that but we take the field goal and something i did realize this game is levy on bell's speed really does hinder him at points because there were some times you'll see a bit later on where if he was just faster i would have easily got two three more touchdowns we get an insane pick there from Mel Blunt. If I'd have cut left, I think I probably would have got a pick six. Unfortunately, I don't. I go right and I get towards the 30, 40 yard line. But I'm going to try and give Jerry a shot deep because I haven't yet. I know he's against Dion and this will be the true test if he can beat Dion. And he does. He comes down with it unbelievably easily straight over Dion and we get a 17 nothing lead going into the second half against the type of team I was against here very happy 
Tahir Whitehead also had a phenomenal game. First sack there, he comes off the edge so well. I'm not sure exactly sure how or why he does it so well, but he does. And we force my opponent to a safety there. As you can see, I'm locking up the flat routes all over the place. He had nothing major while I was user in the flats. So th I think it really put him off that I was user in the lineman towards the flats. He was had no idea what was going on. And he couldn't get a good drive together. But he does, he's not a bad player. I mean, 19 nothing was very fortunate for me. He doesn't deserve to be 19 nothing down because I think he should have got at least some points in the game up to this point. But he's going with very similar plays. He gets a nice play there. As you can see, his reads, once he got his reads, he knew how to throw. But it was just, I think my defence is just so good now that they know what they're doing. As you can see to hear Whitehead again there. Going round the right tackle and getting a very nice sack. Once again he goes for a short punt. I'm going to make sure I don't touch it. He touches it down. I'm going to let it bounce. I don't want to risk anything, a fumble or anything like that. Because it's coming towards the end of the game now. I'm just going to wrap it up by running the ball as much as I can. Unfortunately Le'Veon Bell does get tackled there. We win the tackle battle and if he was faster... He would have been gone there. I think that was uh, Jalen Ramsey or Deion Sanders he was against there. So whatever running back I had probably wouldn't have outrun them easily. But if I had someone with a bit more than 86 speed, they might have. So I'm thinking of upgrading him to Reggie Bush or something. Let me know down in the comments what you think of him. I'm trying to lock up the game here, but we fumble the ball. And we end up actually going so far back, we get out of field goal range. So that would have made it a four possession game. That would have been dead game over. But... He does still have, a, still have a chance at this point. But we get a phenomenal punt. Force him to his four yard line. I'm going to send a heavy blitz here. He goes for the play action. Exactly the problem I had earlier on. And... Oh no, sorry. Exactly the problem he had earlier on with the safety. And all I'm trying to do is just run down the clock at this point. Because it's pretty much game over now. That is under... Well, it's down to pretty much a minute left in the game. He's going to just try and lob it deep and hope. I know that, so I'm not gambling anything. I'm putting so many people deep, as you can see. We're going cover four. We're going to have two people on every ball. We get a nice little user pick there. User Larry, I think it's Larry Wilson, just around the back, enough to get the pick. And that is game. But I know I don't like running the score up on people because I think it can be a bit disrespectful at times, but I just wanted to try Jerry Rice out. And I'm going to launch it to him. He comes down over Dion again. I mean, that's the best cornerback in the game, and he's coming down over him consistently. I mean, that's two big plays that you've just seen in this one game that have got us so far up the field. And once again, we're going to go to him. All I'm going to do is just try and test him out, see how good he is in the game, because it's, it's game over at this point. I'm just testing him out, and I'm going to go with the same route again. I know he's probably going to cover it, but I'm still going to give Jerry Rice the chance. See if he can beat three people. He can't, unfortunately, but that is game. We end up winning the first game of the episode and we're three and nothing in this Super Bowl run. And on to the second game. As you can see, our team again. Let me know if you want to see the team screw up against at the start of each game as well, because I can happily cut that bit out. But my opponent had a decent team, not a phenomenal team, and he had very slow linebackers, which I was going to abuse where I could. I'm going with a wide receiver screen, which was open, but I saw Jerry Rice had about three or four steps on his cornerback there going to give him a nice easy touchdown again so he's already making a huge impact in the team and for getting him so cheap uh, he's definitely definitely already paid his already paid his value to be honest giving us a few nice and easy wins against my opponents but this game could be something different i mean this guy had a very good team as you can see all over the park he's got very good players my my previous opponent had good players but he has some phenomenal players and then the rest of the team is a little bit more bog standard this guy just has a very good team all over the park so it could be a little bit more difficult and he's making some good throws i mean i'm starting to work out a little bit where he's going to be the routes he's going with he's always going if the flats aren't open he's throwing it over the middle so i'm gonna leave a few guys over the middle there he launches it or tries to launch it into the end zone but we actually managed to get a pick there. That's something you very rarely see when the ball's bump, like uh, bouncing around like that, bumbling around like that. It tends to not be a pick. I go with a stupid play action there. He dives at my feet. I thought Le'Veon Bell was going to get the block, and he should have got the block. If you go and watch it back, he definitely should have got that block. But he didn't, and unfortunately for me, 
he ends up getting a safety, but he does launch it deep, nearly comes down with a catch, but we sway out his hands, which you have to start doing manually now, because the AI is really not used to doing it for you. We lock up all the routes, everything in the flats, the two crossing routes over the middle, both locked up, and we force him to turn it over. But he forces us to third and 11. Not sure why Jerry didn't jump for the catch there, but I, th I think it'll work again. I don't think he's, I mean, he's gonna lock it up on the left, but on the right, luckily it's not locked up. And I think that was Antonio Brown, it might have been Tim Brown who comes down with the catch there for us. Two people wide open on the right hand side, and I'm just gonna give it to the one that's more likely to come down with a touchdown, not have to catch it in traffic. And we end up going 14-2 up in the game. But my opponent, his offense wasn't bad. Once again, I, I think the defense does a hell of a lot for me in this game, considering I don't think the play calling I do is fantastic, but I think the players I have definitely make up for it more than not. And they get me so many more wins than I think I do deserve. But 14 to five. It's two possession. I'm happy with that at half time. He has the ball to start with. I know I can lock him down. I know I can keep him to field goals. But he's going to keep running the ball, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for him to try and send it deep. But you can see, cover two again here, just to lock up over the middle and the flat routes. Once again, he's sending people the exactly the same way. Unfortunately, for some reason, one of my linebackers doesn't move slightly to the right to get a very easy pick there. And he's just playing the game, or playing against the AI perfectly here. He lobs it deep, luckily for us doesn't come down with it. And this play, once again, I think he is going to try and lob it deep. He is indeed going to wait to lob it deep. As you can see, one over the middle. Luckily for us, Larry Wilson comes up with a huge pick, and that is game over. So two games, two wins this episode. If you have enjoyed it, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon for another video.